If you live in the United States, you are almost certainly incredibly aware that the 4th of July or Independence Day is right around the corner. Highways all across the nation, street corners and little towns all over the place are going to be chock full of fireworks stands. Big and small cities alike are going to blow tremendous amounts of budget on huge firework displays all over the nation. <laughs> Brilliant colors are about to fill our night skies. And those colors are owed to minerals, or more specifically, mineral elements. They are mining products. So today we're going to go over some of these mining products. Specifically, we're going to talk about firework colors, the mineral elements that cause those colors, the minerals themselves, and some of the other industrial uses for those minerals. But first, a message from this video's sponsor, the Darwin M2 by Beaver Labs. Let's go. This is K2 Granite. It's a rather striking rock that comes from K2, the mountain with the second highest elevation in the world next to Everest. Hence the name. And with the help of this video's sponsor, the Darwin M2 by Beaver Labs, we're going to take a closer look. K2 Granite is well known for its interesting blue azurite and sometimes green malachite coloring. The general consensus today is that weathering and erosion from glacial activity carved K2, and a now long gone layer of copper rich minerals left its mark by staining the granite below. Azurite and malachite are some of the minerals that can form as copper deteriorates. It's a small, seemingly imperceptive piece of evidence of a long gone world. But there is an awesome world that you can explore in your own backyard with the Darwin M2 by Beaver Labs. This portable microscope can take photos and video in 1080p and magnify up to 1600 times. It's intuitive to use and a lot of fun for people of all ages. So if you want to go on an adventure in your own backyard, check the link in the pinned comment and description, or go to beaverlabtech.com and use the promo code JAMES10 at checkout for 10% off your order. New sponsor, show them some love, and let's go. This whole video may or may not have just been an excuse to buy fireworks, but fireworks come in a wide range of colors. I'm personally biased towards the blue ones and these uh, crackly, floaty gold ones. Interestingly, both of these come from elements that can be found in your own body. Blue, in the fireworks industry, is made from copper. It's one of the oldest metals to be used by humans, and primarily used in electronics and power generation today. A whole lot of copper goes into powering your average home. Now what you see here is actually a copper spray, the copper was melted and thrown down and allowed to recrystallize, but there is also a native copper as well. And it looks a lot like this, and you're likely familiar with it. But as it deteriorates, it creates a wide range of secondary minerals like malachite and azurite. You can see malachite here. The gold sparks that I like are a combination of charcoal and iron. There are a lot of iron pairing minerals out there, but one of the most common that has industrial use is hematite. What you see here is a specular hematite. And let me say that as far as iron is concerned, it's the real MVP. It has medical applications, it's used in construction and infrastructure, electrical equipment, the car you drive, and yes, even those sparkly fireworks. The next color we'll talk about is red. And that color comes from using strontium. Aside from giving a gorgeous red color, it also has applications in the oil and gas industry, as well as making ceramic magnets. Now do you know what the most important commercial source of strontium is? Celestine. Which I frankly did not realize until making this video, so that's a cool fun fact for both of us. Now on to purple. Think back to your elementary school art classes. What colors of paint did you have to mix together to get purple, blue, and red? Well, likewise, strontium and copper mixed together equals purple in fireworks. Yellow, not to be confused with gold, is made from sodium. 
It's also used to make uh, PVC for piping, as well as a chemical used in paper production. You can also thank mining for your paper. After all, if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. The majority of sodium is derived from the electrolysis, a process of using electrical currents to create a chemical reaction of the mineral halite, or uh, table salt. <laughs> uh, moving on to orange. Take some strontium and sodium and boom, orange. Next up is green. You'd think that green would be a mix of copper and sodium, but you would be wrong. The green color in fireworks is actually barium. One of the most common sources of barium is the industrial mineral barite. Barium has applications in the medical industry as well as oil industry. It has a very high specific gravity. It's heavy. It's dense. <laughs> Finally, gray, white, or silver is produced by one of or a combination of three elements. Titanium, zirconium, and magnesium. Magnesium is found in over 60 minerals, but only dolomite, magnesite, brucite, carnalite, and olivine are commercially significant. The main economic source of zirconium is the mineral zircon, which, personally, I really like. A nice zircon crystal can be cut amazingly. Titanium is primarily derived from ilmenite and rutile. All three mineral elements have tremendous metallurgical and ceramic applications. As we wrap up, a couple of quick notes. First, obviously these aren't the only things that make fireworks. The mineral elements are generally processed into a salt of some form or variety. Also things like aluminum have uses. Um, aluminum is generally used to make loud booms. Oh, and then there's the gunpowder itself, so let's talk about that for a second. I'm not going to give specifics because I don't want a three-letter agency showing up, but it's generally a combination of potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal. Again, not getting into specifics because three-letter agency is scary, uh, the potassium nitrate is typically made as a chemical reaction where they neutralize a potassium-based acid. The sulfur can be mined sometimes around salt deposits and salt domes, however, generally today most of the sulfur that we get is a byproduct of oil and gas production. And the charcoal is made from heating up trees or other organic matter. It is insane how many mining products go into our everyday lives. Anyway, be safe this Independence Day, because remember, somebody somewhere out there, this is the last Independence Day for somebody to have all 10 fingers. <laughs> so, so be safe, be careful. And if you haven't yet, check out, the, uh, check out the Darwin M2 by Beaver Labs. Link is in the description and pinned comment, and you have a good day.